Jonathan here. I wanted to tell you a little story about a steam engine. bore you to death with this but uh, 20 plus years ago I was told about a steam engine and this is a big stationary unit 175 to 200 horsepower 10 foot flywheels uh, Bates Corliss uh, Bates being the company that built it Corliss being the valve design okay uh, long that's a long story that I'm going to try to make short but uh, a lot of stuff has went on over the years with this engine uh, a fellow that has passed away years back told me about where the governor was at nighttime you could uh, if you went by the house a particular house in Bass North Carolina you could see it in the window uh, the outline of it and I don't know where that I never got to know exactly where that house was at so over the years things have been taken off this engine um, the Bates Corliss sign, uh, plaque, you know, the original machinery plaque, and then, uh, or machinery plate, and the governor, uh, you know, anything anybody could steal. And it's, like I said, I don't want to bore you to death on this, but I'm going to go ahead and tell the whole story, and you can hang with me if you want to, or skip ahead if you don't. So, what happened? Uh, I wanted this engine. I tried to get this engine. Uh, talked to a lot of the old timers around there. It used to run a uh, window door and window factory that was 300 foot long, is my understanding. And then that later on, that factory became a candle factory, and it burnt down. And when it burnt, everything in the factory and the factory itself burnt except for this engine because the engine was in a separate. A uh, little building and it would have run a belt to a line shaft that ran the entire factory so one time many years back I was driving through checking on the engine every time I went to Bass I would drive past it and I I couldn't find the owner at that time and or didn't know who the owner was and it was a piece of land and I didn't know how to look stuff up on the internet back then, you know, to find out whose land it was and nobody knew anything. And so one day I just happened to be driving by, checking it out and I'd done it multiple times a week. I would use that particular little road because I wanted to just see if anybody was there. And I noticed a bulldozer pushing the building down that the engine was in. And I stopped him and I knew of him, I didn't know him well, but I knew of him. But I told him, I said, look, uh, I'm trying to buy that engine. You know, what are you doing? He said, well, I was pushing it over the hill. And he'd already pushed the steam boiler and the steam pump, which I hope I can show you in this video. He had already pushed them over the hill. They were gone. So, uh, piled up with brush and trees and stuff. So, wasn't nothing I could do with that. But he had already caught the end of the building and had ripped the end of the building off and tore it up pretty bad. So, uh, I, you know, like I said, I stopped him and asked him who the owner was and he told me who he was clearing the land for and who the owner was. So I was able to go see the guy. Well, he was an elderly man and handicapped in a wheelchair and he was still working, you know, trying to, you know, run a, a little business. And I spoke with him about it, and he would sell it, but he wanted $3,000 for it. And I explained to him that I had just stopped his uh, guy that was clearing from pushing it over the hill, and he sort of acted like it, you know, bothered him, or he was upset a little bit about it, but it didn't seem like it, you know, too much like it anyway. So he basically said, well, I'm going to make him take it back out, you know, drag out the steam pump and the boiler out from over the hill and set it back up there, which he did not do. Uh, and my understanding is it's still down over the hill. So 
what had happened was uh, I, you know, finally got him to give me a price and uh, $3,000, which was way out of the ballpark of what I wanted to pay. But I, I decided that I would make an offer on it. And the offer I wanted to make was, was way higher than really what the engine was worth. But I offered him $2,000 for it. He would not do it. Uh, I, you know, it's going to be a pretty good job to move that engine. I mean, I've got trucks and rollbacks and everything else. And, you know, a lot of work, a lot of weight. But I was too afraid that with the price of scrap at that time, you know, it was going up and up that that engine was going to get scrapped. And my opinion is, is that engine should be sitting right out on Front Street in Bass, North Carolina. Uh, it's a history. It's part of their history. It's, you know, a big part of their history because a lot of the people that used to live in Bass would have worked at that factory. And it's probably the biggest, you know, factory anywhere around there. And... You know, with history being erased like it is right now, you know, with all the, the stuff that's happening, you know, I would prefer to keep all the history I could keep and learn it and, you know, we learn from it. So anyway, what I'm getting at is I never could afford it. And it turns out that another guy was able to get that engine. I thought that he had got it after the owner died, but after talking to him today, uh, he got that engine from the guy before he had passed away. Well, now there's the closest bit of hope that I'm going to be able to save this engine as possible. But the problem, there's a problem, a few problems, uh, actually. So one of the deals is, is the, the flywheel has been taken off and taken to one location along with the rod and I think the main crankshaft. And then uh, I think that possibly some of the parts may have been taken to another location. And then the, a lot of the stuff is still there. The main, uh, the main parts, uh, piston, rod, all that is still gonna be here. So that is one issue. Second issue, the land. I don't know who owns the land now. He's saying, the guy I spoke to today is saying that the church owns the land. I don't know for sure. And they may or may not. And I know before, I'm not sure. I know they was building a church there. Okay, so we're coming down the little road that it's on. And I see the church up here that has been built. There's the house. That house was there beforehand. Maybe I'll get lucky and the pasture will be here. This is Sunday. So it's going to be over here in the woods. I don't see any cars here. But there is a phone number. That's a good thing. So let's pull over to about where the engine's at. Now there's railroad tracks right directly in front of us. So that engine is going to be right in front of us somewhere in the edge of the woods here, or in the woods. I want to try to get this engine. I've been trying for 25 years, I guess, to get this engine. So I'm actually going to step out and walk over and see if we can see it in here somewhere. Okay, folks, so I took a walk back in there and I don't see it. I know the rest of it's there, still there. Uh, been so long so many years since I've been here and I'm gonna have to figure out because I'm sure they knocked the building down that it was in so it's probably sitting out growing up around it pretty hard uh, anyway we're gonna we're not through I just don't want to mess around on somebody's property too much uh, you know it's a church so I'm gonna get the number of the church and we get a hold of the pastor and talk to him uh, try to get this stuff arranged to where we can get this thing and get it out of here if the deal goes through uh, I'll know something more tomorrow the, the problem with this thing or the problem that I see now is when it was sitting in this woods here it was all one piece it was together and you know somebody could have done something with it well unfortunately now you know this thing's taken apart and scattered out it's at at least two different places and maybe three 
so that is the reason that I am trying to do something on this because this is a piece of history that we can't get back. Once this is gone, it's gone. What I plan to do, one way or the other, is I can get this engine and get it all in one location. That to me is saving it. Uh, and secondhand, I'd love to put it together, not as a running unit, but just as for looks. Maybe people could stand in front of it and get their picture taken, you know, something like that. But it would save it. And then 100 years from now, if somebody wants to take this engine and make it into a running steam engine, you know, the technology and the, you know, it's a, of course being old technology, but they'll be able to do it. There's no reason why they wouldn't be able to, you know, have this thing back together. And I, it's, I'm sure, over, well, well over 100 years old now. So anyway, so this is the, the big long story on the steam engine that I've <laughs> really tried hard to get many times. You know, I seen the flywheels land at a particular place. I thought that it was gone for good. I was pretty sure it was gone for good. But once I found out who owned it and who got it, I realized that I might be able to do something. So anyway, let's uh, see if we can save this thing. That's the main thing, you know. Uh, it, it's not about me. It's not about my YouTube channel. It's not about anything except for the fact that this Bates cordless uh, needs to be saved. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll uh, just see what happens from there. All right, here's the crankshaft. This one of the bearing caps for the crankshaft and the flywheel, which are we'll say 18 inches, 20 inches wide probably. Yeah. This was a lot of the parts anyway. Well, we're gonna see what we can do. It's a 10 foot diameter flywheel total. <clears throat> so everything seems to be here. Everything that I was told was here is here, as far as I can see. It's all Babbitt. Bab it around all the bearings, see what that surface looks like. Yeah, not too bad. All right. At least it looks like a lot of it's here. I don't see the big bolts for the flywheel. But a lot of it is here. All right. Okay, folks, so the plan is, hopefully, to be able to acquire this thing. And if we do, we can either set it up or just store it in one particular place. Uh, I'm not looking to put it back together and put it into service. I'm looking at trying to save it. So that's the plan. We're going to see what happens from here. Uh, I'll know a lot more. When I meet with the guy again, and also, like I said, I'm going to talk to the pastor at the church and make sure that there's not going to be any issues on that. I'm trying to cover all my bases on this, and we're going to see how it works out. But uh, anyway, if uh, it's been a long time, a long journey on this because the scrap prices are down, so that's one of the good things. I just hope the rest of it's there in the woods. I didn't see it, but we're going to hopefully be able to find it and go from there. All right, part one, let's hope part two comes out good. All right, bye.